Welcome to the Mentoring Triangle at London County. And today we're going to be talking about sports managers and whether or not they should be judged purely on the performance of their teams or whether they should also be role models to society. And to discuss the topic, my two colleagues, Steve Turner and Julia Powell, are with me today. Um, so perhaps, Julian, we'll start with you. Um, biggest piece of news in sport in the last few weeks uh, has been Alan Pardew headbutting an opposition player uh, and being banned from the touchline for the next seven matches. Um, this whole topic about being role models, um, do you think it's a, a fair comment or do you think yeah. it's, it's harsh? In, in, no. Indubitably, yes, they should be role models about the sorts of behaviours that they would like to see in society. I've only been punched once by a young man. I won't tell you the story about why it happened. He swung at me and I went away thinking about where had I seen that angry face before? And where I'd seen it was in Wayne Rooney shouting and swearing at a referee and then shouting and swearing at the television. And then cut to two weeks ago at Twitten at an international, Robbie Savage and Joey Barton were saying, this is a bit different, isn't it? We've got, it's much less tribal, we've got the world sitting down with the English, they're having a drink, they're being nice to each other, there's no swearing at the referee, there's very little abuse, it's very different, isn't it? So I think there's something really important about role but there's also something very important about context. And in the football world, in what you feel in football grounds, what Alan Pardew did was unacceptable, but it was still pretty close to what goes on quite a lot. So I think there's something about context and breaking from context, but in duty, yes, they should be role models as far as possible because young people notice. Mm. I was wondering if you thought it was a representation of uh, a style of leadership you see right through the game. Picking up on Julian's point, um, parents can behave that way on the touchline. Parents, of course, are the ultimate role models for children. Is it stretching it too far to say that it's symptomatic of a... Uh, a poor culture in the game? So six weeks ago, Gary Lineker wrote a piece in the New Statesman sure. was talking about the effect mm. that parenting has on stifling the talent from a creative perspective. When he, he watched football, when watching his, his teenage sons play, and also when they were a little bit younger. And there's no doubt that um, if we're going to free people up to make their own decisions, um, and be creative and be prepared to make mistakes in the sport, then taking the fear away so it's more um, of a, a joyful engagement. Uh, that's got to be a healthier culture. But I just wonder if it's got a lot to do with the pressure that people are under now mm -hmm. uh, in some of these leading sporting roles where the ability to manage one's own emotional fitness and have to the control that's needed and really understanding consequence mm. in the moment is such that, that, that people are very much on the edge, um, that it's becoming almost more acceptable for people to do that. Um, and the more examples there are of people behaving in such a way, yeah. the more tolerant society becomes of it. Well, I agree with that, I think there's a lot about that. And if one thinks about other sports, this is a very rare occurrence. It's pretty common in football, but it's not in golf, cricket, rugby. These managers are under intense pressure, and yet you don't see the same anger and throwing off jackets and jumping around as you do in football. So I think there's a lot about this culture um, and that context. So in that culture, I mean, football is different from some of the others in a number of ways. It's a, it's a working class game. It's got other characters, it's, it's, it's uh, more money driven. Uh, there are a number of factors which make the context of football different. Mm. You could argue that's, that's, that, that's not an excuse, that's an explanation maybe, but I wonder if that then says maybe we have to pay even more attention to leadership in football perhaps mm. than the others. Sure. Uh, I think your, your point you were making there about the danger of the sort of impulsivity of young men Youth offenders institutions are full yeah. of young men, and primarily men, who act without thinking, without thinking about the consequences. Here's an experienced professional mm. acting impulsively with no self-regulation. Yeah. And that's a really quite scary example to be giving yeah. to, a, to young people in general and to a sport. Mm. One, one of the things that frustrates me 
uh, is when such behaviour is excused on the basis that someone is just passionate mm -hmm. or that they wear their heart on their sleeve. And I think the real skill uh, in being a high performer is to be uh, fueled by your passion, mm -hmm. but to be able to be really cool in the head where you make good decisions and you're very aware of moving from one moment to the next moment. Whereas if you're too caught up in your emotional response, you're out of control and, and, and you're missing stuff. But ultimately, I think we all understand um, how important it is to model at leadership level the right behaviour. Um, and it's so, I, I, I'm, I'm of, the, um, of the group that says, if you can't behave properly, then you shouldn't be in a senior leadership role. Um, and I think if people were made examples of, however tough it is for them, then it certainly sends a message out to everybody else. That, You'd have sacked him. Well, it's not for me to make that call. Mm. I'm not running Newcastle United. But I certainly think in terms of a, a governing body who's charged with the responsibility of the league and the sport, mm. you know, really strong punishments. And I don't just mean heavy fines. And part of that for me, very much you talk about offenders, is the kind of rehab programme that you go through in terms of the learning, yeah. which gives you an opportunity to actually pay attention to some of the, not just behaviour, but to really you know, explore some of the, the catalysts that may have been um, contributing towards that. I, I'd love to have seen a number of other things after the event. I'd like not to have seen the event at all, of course. But what about his leadership behaviour afterwards? We had some words that demonstrated he might be contrite, but do you, do you think that was enough? What would you like to have seen from him, for him to, to model, oh my goodness, I've made a terrible mistake here. I've set an appalling example. What, what could he have done after the event? And he did do an apology, didn't he? I think Ananias is asking too much, and we were talking about it a bit earlier when we were talking about David Mills. I mean, how about talking about it? and what would happen for him in that moment, and his vulnerability, and what happened with his anger, and why he didn't control it, and what he's thinking about, and to be open and vulnerable. I don't know whether he is particularly capable of that, but that's I think what I would have liked to have seen. I think that's what we'd see leaders in other organisations yeah. do. Yeah. Well, I think the one good thing that's come out of it was that people in punditry, and particularly, say, the Match of the Day programme that evening, were weren't ducking it. There can be a tendency for some media folk to want to protect their friends or, or the sport or, or, or make a comment and sort of move on, but they were really strong on actually raising the subject uh, and staying with it. Um, and let's just hope that um, Alan Pardew, who's been a very successful sure. English manager, is able to take this really disappointing episode and as he uh, acknowledges he has been a serial offender on the touchline. Mm. Um, and manage himself differently. I mean, at the end of the day, we all make mistakes. We're human, we're flawed, yeah. Yeah. but it's about how we learn from things as we move forward. Yeah. Uh, and in a leadership position, demonstrably so. I think that's the key thing, that we might learn in the privacy of, you know, uh, Aaron Hammers or whatever it is, but I, I'd love to be seeing some things from him where he's not just verbally contrite openly, but, uh, you know, does he give the award at the annual uh, management control yeah. course ceremony every year at Newcastle from now on, and he's on the board, or, you know, or he's on the course himself, De almost with a degree like we're smiling at that. Sure. But that kind of self-deprecation, that self-awareness, that self-honesty, which would really go a long way towards again making the most out of a crisis, actually, yeah. uh, and make uh, make the most of a bad situation. Sure. Well, that's up, sir.